Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to go before the throne with the word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for every day. But especially for today, as we celebrate a holiday which is called Mother's Day, we thank you for a special blessing uh, on those persons who are mothers and those who uh, uh, natural mothers, those who uh, have adopted children, those who are uh, standing in the place of mothers, we ask a special blessing on, on all of them. And I always just thank you for this opportunity to come today because we know that we're here today by grace. Uh, we thank you for traveling mercies that allowed us to be here today. We thank you for traveling mercies on those persons who are on their way buying up any accidents or any other incidents which may hinder their safe arrival as we come to lift up your holy name. Thank you, Lord. We thank the Lord for your example of love. We thank the Lord that as we uh, go through our daily routines that we remember that you are love and we are made in your image, therefore we are love. And we thank the Lord for that we continually speak words of encouragement to everyone with whom we come in contact, that we constantly and consistently lift them up. We do not uh, speak negative words uh, to anyone. We speak positive words to, to anyone with whom we come in contact, and we speak positive words about ourselves. We offer words of encouragement whenever we meet someone. And we thank the Lord that you have given us uh, this opportunity to be here because we know that we live from moment to moment only because of you. We lift up our country, we lift up our president. We thank the Lord for instilling in him the desire to, to be a servant to the people. We ask you to go into the inner recesses of his heart and uh, instill in him that which you want him to do. We ask that for all of our leaders. And Lord, we just thank you again for this opportunity to come. We dedicate this service to you as always. And Holy Spirit will be in command. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We'll be reading from Proverbs 31:30. If you need a Bible, please raise your hand, and you'll be given one. Those that are at the door, you all come on in. Come in. Thank you. Have a seat. Or stand. If you need a Bible, raise your hand, please. Proverbs 31, 30. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. May the Lord add a blessing to the Lord. Greet the person around you and just tell them, hello, good morning. Let them know that it's good to see them. As we are, as we are greeting one another, let's keep in mind the fact that we're pressing on. We're not here to stay, but we're pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Come on, let's put our hands together. I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on.
faithful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's prepare our hearts to pray. You may be seated. us to his character, to introduce us to the boundaries of God, the mindset of God, the provision of God, the enhancements of God. And today it's prayer time, and I recall something that was shared with me a long time ago. The Bible says, like people, like priests, and when I see you, I know I'm looking at me my brokenness, my flaws, and my needs. And a blessing came to me two days ago of a recall, something that we had been using many years ago and had uh, not used it collectively in congregation for a long time in prayer, but I have used these things with individuals and their spiritual word-based profiles that are healing scriptures. And I'm going to use it this morning because like people, like priests. Like priests, like people. Amen. Our needs are community needs. Amen. And these scriptures are only going to profit you if you mix them with faith. You know, the Bible says there's two kinds of hearers. Some people hear, and they walk away just like they were. Because why? Because they don't mix what they heard with faith. But we're all hearing the same thing. Yes. But those that mix the word of God with faith will profit, the Bible says. Yes. So I want you to mix this word with faith. Proverbs 14.30 in the Amplified reads, A calm and an undisturbed mind and heart are the life and the health of the body. God is talking to us about having a calm spirit, not, an un not a disturbed mind, but a calm, focused mind and heart. And it says it's life and health to the body. What do you think stress does, family? It disrupts what? Healing, health, well-being, peace. Now the end of that scripture in, in Proverbs 14.30 says, But envy, jealousy, wrath, or as rottenness to the bones. I, I collect all this kind of stuff and call it hug a buck. All that stuff. Striving, contention, unforgiveness. <coughs> Many are the times that we're our own worst enemy and we're killing ourselves because we won't let it go. Okay, the second scripture, Proverbs 17, 22, a happy heart is a good medicine, and a cheerful mind works healing. Amen. When your mind is troubled, and when you're low, and when you're depressed, healing is not being worked in your body. But a happy heart is the medicine. God wants you to have joy. He, he said the agenda 
for you today. This is the day that the Lord what? Has made and what? Rejoice and be glad in it. Mothers, if they don't send you a card, shame on you if you walk over. Oh, they didn't even send me a card. I haven't heard from Willie Jr. I haven't heard from Bobo. I don't know where Becky is. God does give it. Give them to him. His agenda for you today is joy. Joy. This is the day I made. Therefore, I, says the Lord, get to prescribe and dictate what I want for my children this day. So a happy heart is a good medicine. A cheerful mind works healing, but a broken spirit drives the bones. We're talking about bones again. The first one talked about rottenness of the bones. This one says, this scripture in Proverbs 17, 22, says that it dries the bones. And in Proverbs 12, 24, the amplified version says, a, a virtuous and worthy wife, earnest and strong in character, is a crown, mean joy to her husband. But she who makes a shame is as rottenness in his bones. Bones, bones. And I'm going to do an arthritis profile, arthritis profile, scriptural profile with you today about your bones Amen. and healing for your bones. But before we do it in our prayer time today, I want you to forgive everybody that irks you, everybody that you said they're not my tough cup of tea, everybody you say, I'm sick of. Are you bringing sickness to you? I'm sick. I, he, uh, he makes me sick. Life and death is in the power of the what? Tongue. What are you saying? Our healing has already been appropriated. Okay. My knee's working kind of funny. Arthur must be there. God did not assign you Arthur. God has not given you Arthur. He's given you love. What else? Power and what else? Soundness of mind. Are you welcoming Arthur? No. Are you welcoming any kind of sickness and disease? No. Watch your mouth. For out of it flow all kinds of things. Blessings and cursings. So the word is specific in its presentation. So we're going to... Uh, Repent for the sins of unforgiveness right now. Repeat after me, Father. Father I repent, I repent for, the sin for the sin of unforgiveness, of unforgiveness for bitterness, for, bitterness, for, resentment, for resentment, for a broken spirit, for, broken spirit, for, those, things for those things that have caused me, that have caused me to be at odds with anyone that I could have forgiven but didn't. Father, I acknowledge that unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment, and a broken spirit are direct inroads according to your word for muscular skeletal stress by the enemy. Satan, I shut you out in the name of Jesus. I command you to have no place, for I have repented for opening this door through striving, which God told me do not strive. And so, in Jesus' name, I receive healing. Okay, there are three areas of attack. We'll cover one today, and then our prayer time will be up. I'll cover the other two uh, in the subsequent weeks. The first one is emotional. The Bible says believers will be healed even by the laying on of hands. I want you to lay your hand on yourself. Now, I'm not like your mother. I'm not going to say, put it on your big head, boy. <laughs> Just put it on yourself, lovely person. 
on your correct size head. Okay? All right. I break, I break the, power the power of the spirit of heaviness, of the, spirit of heaviness. the spirit of depression, the spirit of, the spirit of sorrow, the spirit of, the spirit of guilt, the spirit of crying, the, spirit of crying. the root of bitterness, and unforgiveness in my life. I break the power of the demonic attack that has come in through these in the, through these in these things. In Jesus' name. I break the power of the spirit of inflammation. Get out of my body. In the name of Jesus. I break, I break a demonic attachment to the Golgi apparatus, which specializes in and secretes carbohydrate compounds called muco poly saccharides. I break the power of a demonic attachment to the endoplasmic reticulum, which secretes collagen. These areas in my body are free from demonic attack and free to function and secrete and supply against these attacks. In the name of Jesus, I will not accept these aches, these pains, a catch, a crook, in the name of Jesus. I break the power of demonic attack on the protein formation. I break the power of demonic attack on calcium, phosphate, metabolism in my body. Go! In the name of Jesus. I break the attack of demonic attachment to the mitochondria, which is the energy producing part of the cell. My energy is at a great level to sustain me for every day's needs. In the name of Jesus, I will not accept lethargy. I will not accept a lesser or limited energy because I'm healed with this area, in this area, in Jesus' name. Okay. I break the power, there's four more, I break the power of demonic attachment and attack to my muscles, to my joints, to the hyaline cartilage. I break the attack of demonic attachment of synovial fluid. The joint lubricant is flowing fine at optimal levels in the name of Jesus. And I break the demonic perversion of bone nutrition and pain. In Jesus' name, I receive my healing. Receive it as done in Jesus' name. Who is a God good? Amen. Do we have any first-time visitors to the Los Angeles Black Horse Great Church this morning? Any first-time visitors? We would love for you to stand and remain standing. We want to welcome you. Amen. Yeah. Hey, 
behalf of Pastor Lawani Grady Johnson, Dr. Ramona Woods, and the entire Shabbat family, we welcome you this morning. We are so happy to see your smiling faces. And please know that you are welcome at any time these doors are open. It is our sincere prayer that you not leave out of those doors in which the same way you came. God has a special blessing and a special word for you. It might be in word, it might be in song, it might be in deed. But he's designed this day a visitation just for you. He's a good God, and don't you ever forget that. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. Don't let this be your last time. We want to see you again. Please remain standing. We want to serenade you.
he's good, Mighty Jake. Mighty Jake. Mighty Jake. This is a day that is designated to acknowledge and to show appreciation to mothers. It is unfortunate that a day had to be designated for such. Hopefully we're doing it daily. I thought Pastor was going to preach my sermon. She didn't quite, but almost. And so the Lord is saying one thing today, and, and that is stay focused. Tell somebody stay focused. Stay focused. Come on, tell somebody else stay focused. Stay focused. Some of the young people, you know, um, one of the things um, we want you to be praying about is... Um, it is problematic when uh, sometimes when we have to depend on parents to bring kids to church. Because it means that sometimes they're not in place when they want to be in place uh, and when they need to be in place. And so the children who are here, the youth, the young people who are here uh, this morning at this time, uh, because we, are we endeavor, tell somebody they are endeavoring to get you out early. Amen. Which means we can't wait on folks. That's right. Amen. Amen. So, uh, the youth, the young people who are here right now are going to come and they're going to share with you one thing they appreciate about their mother. And then we have something for the mothers. So, young folks, come on, come on, come on. One thing uh, that I appreciate about my mom is um, that um, she raised me and she showed me love. Amen. <laughs> One thing that I like about my mother is that she cares for me. Aww. One thing I like about my mother is that whenever time I'm in struggle, she helps me out with everything. One thing I appreciate from my mom is that she's paying for a roof over my head and providing me food. You know what? And I want you to give him a hand. He tied this on high. I think he gave him a hand. If you are a mother here worshiping with us today, would you please stand? If you are a mother, stand. If you are a mother, stand. All right, let's clap our hands and let's just praise the Lord. Remain standing, please, and the young people are going to give you a rose. Come on, let's keep it moving. That's good. That's good. All right. When you when you get your rose, sit down, please. You're only going to give one. All right. We'll take care of her, mother. We'll take care of her. Let's go. Just keep moving, sir. Right here. When you get a rose, please sit down. Thank you. Right here. Noah. Come back this way. They have a handle out there. What mother doesn't have one? She didn't want one. All right. 
Thank you, young people. We're going to read you this um, week's announcements. Uh, but before we do that, those of you who are going to be participating in the uh, ministering spiritual gifts, I think I'm too loud, brother, because it's ringing. Those who are going to participate in the ministering spiritual gifts seminar uh, beginning Thursday, um, uh, first of all, let me tell you that there will be two sessions. Um, the first one is May 17, 18, 19, and then we'll have another one um, July 26, 27, 28. Many of you have already signed up, and this is um, a seminar for activating the gifts of the Spirit in the church. Um, we will have instruction and then we'll have activations uh, for the purpose of learning to, and not just learning, but reinforcing what you've already learned, actually, um, relative to uh, edifying uh, and blessing the body, uh, body ministry. Amen. Many times people come to church to be entertained or to be ministered to uh, by the pastor or leader. And what we don't understand is that scripture teaches us that you're supposed to be ministering to one another. But you can't do it if you're not taught how to do it. And if you're not released or free to do it. So, um, that's what these seminars are going to be about. Uh, and so those who have signed up, uh, if you still want to attend May 17, 18, 19, uh, I'm going to call your name and you need to let me know yes or no. And at that time, can you get me a young person to run? Not run, but move around. Is there yes. younger than you? I have somebody. Okay. All right. Come on. She, Shekayla may not know him. Okay. Give one to each person I call. Okay. Julia may not know your name, so would you please raise your hand? These are the people who have signed up so far for May 17, 18, 19, Lewis Brooks. Raise your hand, please, because this is the information she, you need. Uh, Margaret Fitzhugh. Fred Pitts Jr., maybe we need another person to help. Jackie Pitts, Thaddeus Edwards. Okay, I don't see Shalita. Rose Williams, Lloyd English, you can give that to Mark. Hello, what you need? Thank you. Linda Pullen. Lydia Threadgill. That's all I see here. There are other people's names on here. There's no need to call them. They're not here. Um, hold on. So, is there anybody else who wants to sign up for this week for the Ministering Spiritual Gifts? You want to sign up? All right, Chase. Dr. Wood, is this yes. just for leadership? No. Mm -hmm. This is for whosoever will. Okay. The 17th, 7 to 10. 18th, 7 to 10, 19th, 8.30 to 6.30. Okay. Swimming. Who is it? 8.30. Oh. 
Yes, she needs a letter. 832. 832. Uh, is it somebody participating? Yeah. It's on your letter. Oh, okay. Okay. Anybody else for this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Okay. Pastor wants you to know you do not have to be a member. You just have to have a desire to minister to the body of Christ. Okay. If I can have those letters back, thank you very much. In the second seminar, there's some who have indicated, thank you so much. There's some who have indicated, I can't come on the 17th, 18th, 19th, but you want to participate in the second seminar, which will be July 26, 27, 23. Yeah. And so if that's you, raise your hand and we'll have you sign up now. Sometimes and shifts them. Okay. Definitely here. That was cute. All right. Let's listen to our announcements. Bible study will meet Tuesday. What times? One. One to two and seven to eight. All right. Seven to eight is in the church house, uh, and we, we meet there. At 7 to 8, Fellowship Hall from 1 to 2 on Tuesday. Edify You, the Healing Theater, will meet tomorrow, 7 p.m. in Fellowship Hall. Spiritual Gifts Workshop again will be Thursday uh, through Saturday. And then next Sunday, say next Sunday. Next yes, Sunday. Uh, World on Wheels, the youth will be participating and sponsoring the World on Wheels Day. Flyers are available uh, at the Usher Station. And so for more information, you can see Julia. I, I think uh, Randall must have been thinking about movies or something because he calls you Julia Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I know your name. <laughs> so Randall, my name is Anderson. Julia Anderson. Wow. Raise your hand, Julia. <laughs> yeah. So, Robert is my husband. So, anybody interested in World on Wheels next week? Uh, participating in the beginning. See Julia or get a flyer in the back or in the front. Dunamis Holy Spirit class will meet on Saturday, May 26, 9 to 12. Shabbat is celebrating its 40th church anniversary in July. And Sister Joyce is going to come and tell us about it. Praise the Lord. This, this invitation is for members and visitors and everybody. Um, so we would like for you to invite your family and friends to our cruise, uh, it's a four day cruise, it's November 26th to 30th, and we are going to, well let me just sing the song. <laughs> 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 
is July 28th, and the final payment will be due by uh, September 27th. If you're interested, you need to call Pastor Sanders at 323-310-6535. You will also need to get a passport. You want to get that as soon as possible. And um, you also need to pay, in addition to the Money for your cruise, everybody needs to pay gratuities, which are $51.80 per person. Thank you. Chandra has a playlist and they're all about just about everything that we sing is on Chandra's uh, Jenny Jam list. Yeah. Yeah. Simon has a Jenny Jam, I'm sure. We're adding that to it. Amen. Um, be sure to check out our website at www.lasf.org. I'm sorry, lasfc.org. Secure online giving is available. Very convenient. Amen. We pay our bills online. We do a lot of things online. So why not give online? Amen. Happy birthday to William Jackson. Today. May 13th today. And I'm standing. Cynthia Coleman, May 17th. And my twin, Lydia Threadgill, May 17th. every one of us happy birthday. There's a lot of May babies. Amen. church, the one missionaries and their families, and for those waiting for their healing to manifest. Amen. Healing was done a long time ago. We're just waiting for the manifestation. God is faithful. Amen. They are Katie Tanner, Pam Davis, Brenda Nathan, Faith Faulkner, Hope Miller, Donatus Jefferson, Joan Jefferson, Jeremy Bynum, Kimberly Abrams, that is Edwards, Patrice Edwards, Yvonne O'Neill. Amen. And Sister Margaret Winston, we're good to see you back in the house of faith. Sister Margaret, amen. We're glad to see you. Amen. We've been praying for you. Amen. Is there anyone else that we need to add to today's prayer list? Yes, Sister Margaret. Courtney, Alexia, and James Thompson. Courtney, Alexia, Alexia, and James and James Thompson. Amen. Johnny Foster and Leonard McBean. Johnny Foster and Eliard McBean. Leonard McBean, sorry. Thank you. 
Sister Carol. I don't know her name. She's 16 years old. Amy's daughter, who didn't make it home from school on Friday, correct? Mark Neal. Mark Neal, amen. Uh, my friend Connie, who is dealing with cancer and receiving chemotherapy. Connie? Yes. Okay, amen. Connie. Sister Rose? Lloyd Nash, Michael Nash, Jerry White, Dorothy Bates. Floyd Nash, Michael Nash, Dorothy Bates. Jerry White. Jerry White. Sister Leanna. Paula Holiday and Cinderella Gans. Paula Holiday and Cinderella Gans. Gans. Okay. <laughs> Sister Joyce. Heather Devon. Heather Devon. Vincent Correll. Vincent Correll. Tyrone and Wanda Lynn. Ty John Davis, Richard Johnson, Richard Johnson. Laverne and Jeremy Webb, Laverne and Jeremy Webb. Tracy, Tracy Caldwell, Tracy Caldwell, Cotton, Debbie Wilson Moore, Debbie Wilson Moore, Bertha Thomas, Willetta Kennedy, Kennedy. Kennedy. Inez Broussard. Anyone else? The Lord knows. Amen. We don't know or we forget. He knows. Amen. But we're going to agree in prayer. We're going to pray in English. Please pray out loud in the spirit. Amen. Let's bow more in heaven concerning these loved ones that we mentioned in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you know each and every person that has been called out by name, Lord God. Even those that we don't know, we thank you, Lord God, that you did the work. It was love that nailed you to that cross. Not nails, but love. And because you love, Lord God, we thank you, we praise you, Lord God. You have made it available. You've made healing available. And healing is the children's bread, Lord God. And we thank you that we have the right to even ask for the entire bakery. We just thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for the good news that is coming forth even this week, Lord God, concerning healing, Father God. You took 39 stripes on your back, and we thank you, Lord God, that we are able to approach the throne room of grace, Lord God, and know that our prayers are being answered, Lord God. We're waiting for the manifestation, Lord God. We just thank you for the A-plus report that we're going to hear in an assumed time concerning our loved ones, Lord God. Cancer is just a name. Arthritis is just a name. These are names of diseases, Lord God, and they are at the foot of the cross, Lord God. That's where you put them. And we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that the name that is above every name shall do the work. The work is already done. And so we're claiming it and we're thanking you for it with, with the good news forthcoming in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. That's our prayer time. Amen. For those that are waiting for their healing, continue to believe God. Okay. All right. We're going to receive ministry and song with Psalm Shabbat. And you all know this song, so we expect you to sing along. How great is your God? Is he great? Then you know this song. Amen. We're going to stand and sing. Amen.
he's a good guy. <laughs> I wonder if you would I wonder if you would take just a minute to think of one thing your mother taught you that you live by today. One thing Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. I want you to still think about that and a ministry people form. Yes. Please come up now. Yes. I need you to move expeditiously. Expeditiously. A tribute to fathers. A tribute to fathers on mothers. Oh. Okay. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't speak to them. Morning Prayer by Ella Willer Wilcox. When little things would irk me and I grow impatient with my dear one, make me know how in a moment joy can take its flight and happiness be quenched in endless night. Keep this thought with me all the live long day that I may guard the harsh words that I may say. When I would fret and grumble, fire be hot at trifles that tomorrow are forgot. Let me remember, Lord, how it would be if these, my loved ones, were not here with me. Confide in a friend. When you're tired and worn at the close of the day and things don't seem to be going your way, when even your patience has come to an end, try taking time out and confide in a friend. Perhaps he too may have walked the same road with a much troubled heart and burdensome load to find peace and comfort somewhere near the end when he stopped long enough to confide in a friend. For then are most welcome a few words of cheer for someone who willingly lends you an ear. No trouble exists that time cannot bend, but to get quick relief, just confide in a friend. If I had known, and Mary Carolyn Davies, if I had known what trouble you were bearing, what griefs were in the silence of your face, I would have been more gentle and more caring and tried to give you gladness for a space. If I had, I would have brought more warmth into the place, if I had known. If I had known what thoughts despairing drew you, why do we never try to understand? I would have lent a little friendship to you and slipped my hand within your hand. 
and made your stay more pleasant in the land if I had known. My title is Love, and it's by Roy Croft. I love you, not only for who or what you are, but for what I am when I am with you. I love you, not only for what you have made of yourself, but for what you are making of me. I love you for the part of me that you bring out. I love you for putting your hand into my heaped up heart and passing over all the foolish, weak things that you can't help dimly seeing there and for drawing out into the light the beautiful belongings that no one else had looked quite for, quite far enough to find. I love you because you are helping me to make of the lumber of my life not a tavern but a temple out of the works of, me, of my every day, not a reproach but a song. I love you because you have done more than any creed could have done to make me good and more than any faith could have done to make me happy. You have done it without a touch, without a word, without a sign. You have done it by being yourself. Perhaps that is what being a friend means, after all. This is a prayer for every day by Mary Carolyn Davies. Make me too brave to lie or be unkind. Make me too understanding also to mind the little hurts companions give. And friends, the careless hurts that no one quite intends. Make me too thoughtful to hurt others so. Help me to know the inmost hearts of those for whom I care. Their secret wishes, all the loads they bear. That I may add courage to their own. May I make lonely folks feel less alone and happier ones a little happier yet. May I forget what ought to be forgotten and recall unfailing all that ought to be recalled and each kindly thing, forgetting what might sting to, to all upon my way Day after day, let me be joy, be hope, let my life sing. today uh, because it's designated Mother's Day. But how many of you know that it's not a celebration for everybody who has a mother? There are some people who are sorrowful today. There are some people who are depressed today uh, because their experience with mother was not as nurturing or as um, warm or as meaningful as it has been uh, for some others. And so Mother's Day, while for many is, is a happy occasion, for others it isn't such. And we can have a whole lot to say about, about that, uh, but in doing so, uh, we would leave ourselves vulnerable to a lot of speculation and a lot of judgment. How many of you are parents now, but you judged your parents? And now you know a little better. <laughs> you know, and, and 
sometimes you may even wish that you could you could take back some of those judgments that you made uh, because they weren't valid. That they were based on un, uh, a lack of information, uh, based on immaturity, perhaps based on brokenness, and sometimes it was just based on an in rebellion. I mean, just plain and simple. How many of you will say, you know, I, yeah, I was rebellious, yeah. I mean, you know, just hands down. Yeah, sometimes when I talk to children and they're, they're telling me all the things they don't like, et cetera, et cetera, I want to know, well, what's your part? Because it's easy for us to point the finger at other folks without looking at what my part is. Hello? And in any relationship, relationships are not one-sided, they are two-sided. And sometimes we even let three and four folks get into them and so they really become convoluted and confused. So what I'd like for you to do, for those of you who would like to, tell us one thing that you live by that your mother taught you, one thing. Now, understand, we have a time limit. Tell somebody a time limit. Yeah. So you can't you can't give a sermon. All right. You can't give a five minute nothing. Okay. It's got to be a minute or under. Okay. Can we do that? Yes. One thing. One thing. One sentence that you live by the day that your mother taught you. Okay? Now, if you want to do this, I'd like for you to come up, get in the line, the pastor's going to start it, and we're not going to wait. Don't go to bed leaving dirty dishes in the sink. All right. Come on, Janelle, we're going to take you first. Come on, Maria. Right. Really? My mommy taught me to always be a giver. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. All right. My mother often had to remind me that it wasn't what I said, it was how I said it. Okay. Ooh, yeah. That's another one. My mother taught me that although we didn't have much, that to be kind to people because you never know who may have to hand you a cup of water someday. Okay. My mother taught us that if you can't say anything nice, don't, don't say, say anything at all. Come on. I'm going to put this in street terms. Um, basically, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So wake up, take a shower or bath. If something comes along, you can jump in the car and go. My mother always said, better safe than sorry. If you say you're going to do something, follow through. Be a leader, not a follower. This is actually one of those things that we said last week. If a task is once begun, never leave it until it's done. Be the task large or small. Do it well or not at all. Yes. Respect take you to the world. Right. My mother taught me to always pray. Right. Yeah. My mother taught me that no matter what, God will never leave you. Stay out of other folks' houses. I got a true friend. Jackie just said one of my, my dad said we're not doing college. And my mother said it's nice to be nice. My mother taught us everybody's the same. All right. Now, there's some of you who didn't come up. And there were things that your mother taught you. That, that you didn't share for whatever reasons, and that's okay. But your mother taught you something, more than likely. And if you weren't uh, around your mother, someone who had influence over you taught you something. So how many of you had mother substitutes or um, people who, who raised you uh, but it wasn't necessarily your mother. Mother figures, thank you, sir. Uh, no, you already gave your mother. Okay, those of you, female today, female influence. 
Okay? Come, come now. If you, if you want to share. If you want to share. Now, it didn't have to be your mother. Okay, if you didn't already, let's go. Uh-huh, if you didn't already. If you didn't already, if you didn't already share, but there was a person of influence, female. My aunt was a person of influence, and she always taught me that uh, when you go to the restroom, make sure you wash your hands when you come out. Extension time saves nine. Any, anybody else with the female influence? Mom? I had an aunt who always wanted me to be a lady. Oh, Hi, Cookie. <laughs> Luke chapter 6.
love is not always mushy. Love is not always uh, what we would say um, compliant. Love is not negated just because you don't agree. Amen. You get a one-year-old and he or she is prohibited from doing something they want to do, what will they more than likely do? They're going to cry, have a tantrum, yeah, pout some kind of way. They're one. They're unable. There's a part of their brain, really, that has not developed enough for them to exercise self-control. When we get to be 20 and over, what is our excuse? When we're still acting as though we're one years old. And really sometimes don't like our parents when they insist that we behave in a way that is reflective of being older. One of the things I've learned is that you can age, but that doesn't mean you mature. Getting older isn't necessarily indicative of maturing or growing. Amen. So it is important that we study the word so that we can be doers of the word and not hearers only. For those of you taking notes, uh, we're going to briefly talk about unforgiveness and forgiveness. It is essential that we understand one of the first laws that God gave was honor your, your mother and your father, that your days may be what? Long on the land that the Lord gives you. Now, do you understand that in no translation is there an adjective before the word mother and father? It doesn't say honor your good mother. And your good father. There's nothing that says honor your diligent mother or your diligent father. There's nothing there that says love or honor your present mother or your present father. It just says honor your mother and your father. All those adjectives we add. Well, they didn't understand. They didn't listen to me. They ain't this, they that, they the other. All of those things that go before mother and father don't count. And because they don't, it may be that some of the interactions and some of the relationships uh, that we had with mother was not as warm and as um, nurturing as they needed to have been. <laughs> We have one responsibility. Luke chapter 6, verse 27. I usually do this in Matthew 5, 44. But one of the things I'm finding is that in uh, more recent translations, uh, it's being washed. In other words, many of the vital elements of it are being done away with. But Luke 6 tends not to be tampered with very much. One of the key weapons used by the enemy of our souls against love is unforgiveness. Luke 6, 27. Do you have it? I'm reading from the ESV. But I say to you who hear Jesus speaking, and this is during the occasion of him pronouncing or what has been labeled um, the Beatitudes, the ways of being, the attitudes that we are to have. Not that we are just to exhibit, but that we are to have. Sometimes we can floss. Amen. 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 And the truth comes out when we're under pressure. Tell somebody the truth. 
of who you are or what your attitude is and your motivation will surface under pressure. When you get in a fix and you get under pressure, the real you comes out. No matter how apologetic you are about it, the real you comes out. Jesus said, I say to you, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. What's verse 28? Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who... All right, the ESV says abuse you. Misuse you. You can define that any way you want to define it. It's a pretty general statement. That requires no real interpretation except your own. Because the responsibility for doing what it says, love, do good, bless, and pray, lies or falls on us. Jesus here is teaching. And he's instructing these ones how to follow after him in a way that is going to prove to be productive and maturing. You don't grow and mature by agreeing with those who agree with you. There's no friction there. We'll flow. Friction comes in, or growth comes in, development comes in, when you can hear yes, I mean no, and hear yes because your submission is to the Lord and not to folks. I'll say it again. Maturity and growth can be developed when we hear no, but because of our submission to the Lord, it's a yes. What do you mean by that? A classic example. This morning. We had a certain number of roses and I asked the Lord how we should expedite the distribution of them without anybody being offended. Because that was a concern that was in the council meeting. Offense. Now I believe he told me what to do. So everybody who was here at the time got a rose and we have some left. Now it could have been that somebody pushed back and said, because that was a suggestion, let's do it at the end of the service. Or let's do it at the beginning of the service. We did it toward the middle. And it worked well. Submission. It, it has nothing to do with what I think. It has to do with what's happening. Come on, tell somebody teamwork. Teamwork. I don't like working with teams. Let me say I didn't like it when I was in school. Because, and when you get to the postgraduate level, sometimes you have to, you have to work with teams. Dr. Janice, I despise it. Because everybody didn't have the same uh, academic level or desires that I had. Man, I believe in A's. You know what I'm saying? I think you're supposed to get an A. That's what, I mean, you know. You, you put forth in the effort. They want us to get them an A. Yeah. And I, I didn't like that. I, I didn't like that. And I didn't learn that until I was uh, doing my MBA work and uh, we were on the team and there was an old veteran. Well, he wasn't old. He was older than us. Veteran. And he was in there and he, he wanted to help the VA and that's why he was in there to get his MBA. Could I tell you, that brother didn't know how to use a computer. He didn't know how to, I mean, there were a lot of things missing. I, I don't know how he got his bachelor's, but he had to have because he was in the master's program. 
But I tell you, we did teamwork, right? So the young ladies who were also on, on the team with us uh, decided, we decided, we will do the work. Mm. We were getting C's and B's because he was in F. Amen. Teamwork meant we acted as though we were soldiers and no man was going to be left behind. Did he get his degree legitimately? No. Well, I'm going to say that most of the work was done by his team members. That, that's all I'll say. Because we had a work ethic. We could not choose our team members. They were chosen for us, unfortunately. Somebody is not here. Sometimes, when you're on a team, you may have to take one for the team. In other words, sometimes, you may have to do some work for a team member who just can't. Or maybe won't. Whichever the case, the effect is the same, right? Their part is missing. And you can either suffer or you can bring up the back. Hello. It, it was worth the sacrifice to me. Hello. Yeah, somebody's not hearing what I'm saying. My goal was A. Come on, you can sit and complain. And we did a couple of times about, dang, he can't even get... He can't read and tell us what was in that paragraph. And then after a while, we got to the point, why are we wasting time with this? Look, you read that, that article, I'm going to read this article or two, and we may have to double up, but we're going to get this done because we have a time frame and we have a goal in mind, and the whole thing is we, we, we have to reach the goal. Because the teacher told us we could not put him out of our group. Ah. There were some of my team members who had choice words to say. It wasn't in no tongues. Yeah, they became bilingual. And what they said was true in terms of the sacrifices that had to be made. But I always told them, look, I like A's. What did you say we got to do? Hello? Difference in attitude, difference in motivation. What, what do we have to do to get this A? Hello? What, do we, what are the requirements for us to get this A? And if the team is the one who's getting the grade, guess what? One member, or two even, if necessary, is not going to stop the show. We're going to get an A. You're not hearing about it. Sometimes in life, you may have to pull up the back for someone who's unable to do that or unwilling to do it. It does not matter. Learn to walk in humility and understand that you can forgive. And sometimes that looks like doing what you need to do after you forgive them. Lord, I release them for being slovenly. I release them for being trifling. I release them for being whatever it is you decided they are. In Jesus' name, I thank you. I receive what I need to get this done. So that the goals can be accomplished, not because everybody is participating equally, but because your motivation is allowing you to be gracious. Come on, tell somebody, have mercy. Have mercy. And not just mercy when you understand it or when you like it or when, when it's profitable or beneficial to you. 
Loving your enemies does not mean pretend you don't have any. It means recognize them as enemies and choosing to love them. Come on, tell somebody, choose, choose. to love. Do good to those who hate you. No, they hate you. They may not like you. And there are a lot of haters who hate you for no reason. Some of you have grudges against folks you don't even know why. You just do. Some folks wake up in the morning with a chip on their shoulder. No reason. Sometimes it's a matter of us needing to get over ourselves and let go of anger and our self-predisposed ideas about who we think we are and look at who we are according to scripture and you'll find that you're not as much as you think you are and that perhaps the way you are presenting is a presentation that is false and needs to be gotten rid of. How about humbling ourselves before the mighty hand of God? Yes. So forgiveness is an exercise of the will. Tell three people that. Forgiveness is an exercise of the will. It's a choice, not a feeling. Come on, tell them. It's a choice, not a feeling. I'm almost done. Come on, tell them again. It's a choice, not a feeling. Forgiveness is a choice, not a feeling. In order to operate it or to walk in it, you have to realize that you can forgive. You can operate within that the will of God. The word says, honor your parents. You can choose to do that. Regardless of how hateful they may have been, how whatever you think, are they your parents? If the answer is yes, then the word says, honor them, period. Know that you can. We like to believe God to work large miracles, but do you understand that it's a miracle when you walk in love, when you walk according to the will of God and in the word of God? You have seen a miracle because it means that you've got to kill your flesh and die to your selfishness. And anytime we die to our own self-will, our pre preoccupation with ourselves, you've seen a miracle. You've seen the dead raised. Well, amen. Some of us are believing to be millionaires. Why don't you believe to humble yourself? So that you can be a good steward over what God gives you. Amen. Realize you can. Then understand the need to forgive. Understand the need to forgive. It is essential that we learn to bless those who curse us. That's not something done under the cover. It's something that you know about. Amen. When folks speak negatively of you, what is your response? Do you show them how to get more weird? Uh -oh. <laughs> Giving them a piece of your mind? And you need all you got? And you need that to be transformed? Huh? I mean, come on. We do things and we say things that are inappropriate and that are not according to the word and that don't produce growth and maturity. Realize you can forgive. Understand that you have to forgive and release bitterness Resentment and other negative feelings because guess what? It does injury to your body. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm. Many people are dealing with arthritic conditions, heart problems, internal problems with the liver and the kidney, 
based on bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. So how do I let it go? You need to ask God to heal your memories. And before you even do that, sometimes we just need to say yes to the Lord. The rest of that is, 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 is important and it's going to get done. And you can do it. But initially, you need to just say yes, Lord. Not my will, but yours be done. I really don't like whatever. But, not my will, yours be done. I really can't stand my mom. I'm not talking about my mother, she's deceased. I, I, you may be saying that. I, I can't stay. I'm dealing with a person now who really does not, they just don't get along with their mother. And I'm constantly telling them it doesn't matter. The word says honor. When's the last time you called? A couple of months. You wrong. We don't have anything to say. It doesn't matter. Call it. How you doing? After a while, you're going to really want to know. Yeah, that's right. Because as you grow, you'll have the mind of Christ. And you'll be compassionate and tenderhearted regarding one another. Amen. Amen. So, walk quickly, young folks, because I'm still talking. Yeah. Y'all walking like old folks. Go ahead and walk up. Yeah. All right. And as God heals us and we say yes, come on, that healing begins to manifest. Remember when Jesus spoke to the lepers, they weren't healed instantly in terms of manifestation. They were healed as they what? As they went. And sometimes we're standing around waiting on the change. No, the change is going to take place as you walk because you're going to do it by faith. Then you'll see the materialization or the manifestation of what it is you are believing God for. So why not pick up the phone or text? How are you? You're not ready to hear their voice? Leave it on the voicemail. Come on, but you got to make a step. Tell somebody, make a step. Come on, tell somebody else, make a step. You have to believe God, trust God. And don't think you're going to run the whole race the first day. You're not, but you can take it a step at a time, but you don't finish anything unless you what? You have to start. You have to start. It may not be mother that you need to forgive. It's whoever it is. In 30, verse 35, it says again, But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be, a great, will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for He is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Have you ever been ungrateful and evil? Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. So, raise your hand if you know when you're being evil or when you have been evil. You may not be evil these days, but you have been. Yeah. Huh? And, and, and you know, you can't say, well, uh, I was on the downside of my bipolar uh, diagnosis. No. Sometimes you just tripping. Come on, sometimes we know we're just tripping. And if we just tell the truth, amen, if we just tell the truth, something can happen to us relative to the word if we apply the word. Come on, say, if we apply the word, things will happen. Father, help us to love, do good, bless, and pray without regard for who it is or what it is, but just that you said it. Help us to say, yes, Lord. Nevertheless, not my will, 
but never is in time. We give you glory. Help us look like you. Kind and tender hearted. And we might prove what your will really is concerning us. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. As the person next to you, do you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord? I said we were going to get out early. I know some of y'all can believe that. But, uh, okay. Ask them. And if they say yes, ask them would they like to accept Him now as, as Savior and Lord. Come on, don't assume. Don't assume. Ask the person next to you. Do you know Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Because this thing called forgiveness, I'm going to tell you that people without Jesus are finding that things go better with forgiveness. In fact, one of the prescriptions as such that many doctors are giving their patients is forgiveness. Amen. Is to forgive. And it's unfortunate that folks don't catch on who go to church don't catch on until medical science or somebody professional has said uh, are there people you need to forgive? Are there things you need to let go of? Come on, some of us have long-term memory that's keen. And it works against us. All you melancholy fellows. I'm calling you fellows because I'm one. I know how y'all think. Amen. You hang on to the point. The, the pig is gone. Yeah, we gonna hang on to the point, man. I mean, we got to wear it out. Ain't no bacon, no pig legs, no pig tails, no spare ribs, none of that. Just the oink is left. We'll hang on to it. Are there things you need to let go of? Whatever your mother did or didn't do is of no consequence. The fact is, is that she's your mother or was your mother and is due honor. Tell somebody, just forgive me. It happens in a process, but it needs to be initiated. It's often initiated with your will. So ask the person next to you, I didn't see anybody come forward, so ask them, have they been baptized in water since they received Christ? If they would like to be baptized in water, they would come forward. We will give them a day and time in which that can happen. Perhaps they have not received the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the New Testament evidence of speaking in tongues if that's their desire. Ask them, have you received the Holy Spirit with the New Testament evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of the Lord will give you the language. If that's your desire, come. All right, if you're seeking a church home, you can make the Los Angeles Shabbat Foursquare Church your church home. In Jesus' name, we'll welcome you. We're not perfect, but we are growing into perfection, into his perfection, into his word. All right. If there are no spiritual needs, let's prepare to worship the Lord with the giving of our tithes and offerings. Let's just with buckets, please. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. The ushers will serve you. Raise your hand high so they can see. 
don't got these jackets and splitters on them. It's pissed and sweat. Yeah, it's it's all over the Y'all cold? Yes. 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 Oh, it ain't raining in here. It's raining in here. No, the building is covered. Raise your hand until you get the envelope. If you're paying for your seminar, um, you can just write LASFC and in the memo write seminar and we will accredit you accordingly. All right. Father, we thank you for those who are giving. We thank you for the hundredfold return on their giving in Jesus' name. Bring the Lord your offerings. Amen. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be All right. 
right. I'm not taking any more, so I need to get rid of these. Uh, we get to get one. We didn't get one. How many we got left? Margaret hasn't won with anybody, have you? Do you have one theater? blessings in the name of Jesus. If you believe, repeat after me, lost money found in Jesus' name. I receive checks in the mail in the name of Jesus. I receive promotions. I receive increase in Jesus' name. Raises. Yes. Benefits in Jesus' name. Doors open, open. that no man can close. No Doors shut, Door shut. That, no that no man can open. Royalties, Royalties. profits, Royalties. windfall blessings. Windfall. In the name of Jesus, things that I know not of, I receive increase. And I receive wisdom. To steward the increase that you will give. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's stand. Oh, don't stand yet. I'm sorry. I forgot something. Uh, if you don't, you're a mother, but you don't have a child that's here today, would you stand? If you're a mother, but you don't have a child who's here today. And I'm talking primarily to our members right now. The children gave their parent, their mothers, a gift. So I'm asking Twelve.
Get some nice novelties. When you, when, you, when you get it, if you sit down, we'll, we'll know everybody. Got it. Thank you. Okay, let's. let's. of the enemy, our rain drivers and the like. In the name of Jesus, preserve us. Help us to be more like you, reflecting your image and your likeness. Help us to humble ourselves and submit ourselves to you. In Jesus' name, as dear children, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Those in agreement say amen. 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 The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, you are dismissed.